Section 5.3 covers properties of the trigonometric function, so let's go over those. So here are six trigonometric functions of theta. Oh, now that I switched it to blue, you can't see. Theta, right? They're all based on our unit circle. So we really need to remember these and have them down pat. Um, also, if you have your handy dandy unit circle around, um, it'll probably help you with this section. So remember that sine of theta is y, cosine of theta is x, tangent of theta is y over x, cosecant of theta is 1 over y, secant of theta is 1 over x, and cotangent is x over y. Let's talk about the domains and ranges of trigonometric functions. Sine and cosine, their domain is all real numbers. You can plug in any real number and get a real value out, right? Sine is x, x is y, cosine is x. And their values, though, can only go from negative 1 to positive 1, right? So here I've got, you know, where sine of sine is 1 at pi over 2, sine is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, cosine is 1 at 0 degrees or any multiple of 2 pi, cosine is negative 1 um, at pi over 2, a pi or any odd multiple of pi. When it comes to tangent, we have to remember that um, we can put in all real numbers except odd integer multiples of pi over 2, right? Remember, tangent is uh, y over x. So when x would be 0 is odd multiples of pi over 2, right? Here we've got pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, any multiples of those would be x would be 0, and therefore um, are undefined. But the range is all real numbers. For cosecant, it's all real inter numbers except um, intermultiple, integer multiples of 180 degrees. That's because cosecant's 1 over y, right? And y is 0 at 2 pi and pi, and then we'd have to be dividing by 0, which we can't do. Uh, as we'll see in section 5.4, when we look at the graphs of these, these all create asymptotes. Same thing for secant, which is 1 over x. Um, all real numbers are in our domain, except odd intermultiples of pi over 2 and 90 degrees. Uh, and all real numbers less than or equal to 1 or negative 1 are in our range. For cotangent, it's all real numbers except integer multiples of 180. Again, that makes sense because we've got x over y. We don't want y to be 0. And its range is all real numbers. A periodic function is called periodic if there's a possible number p such that whenever theta is in the domain of f, so is theta plus p, and the two values are equal, right? If there's a smallest number p, the smallest value is called our fundamental period. You just want to call it the period, the period of f. And believe it or not, all of the trigonometric functions are periodic. So sine of theta is the same as sine plus 2 pi theta. Cosecant of theta plus 2 pi is the same as cosecant of theta. Cosine of theta plus 2 pi is the same as cosine of pi secant of theta plus 2 pi is the same as secant theta, tangent of theta plus pi is the same as tangent theta, and cotangent of theta plus pi is cotangent of theta. So let's try this. Let's say I have sine pi over 4, and I say that's going to be equal as same as sine of 2 pi plus pi over 4, which would be sine of 9 pi over 4. Well, sine of theta, which is pi over 4, would be the square root of 2 over 2. Well, the sine of 2 pi, so you go around our unit circle, 360 degrees, then another pi over 4, it puts you at the exact same spot as the original, pi over 4. So it is periodic with a period of 2 over pi. 
let's talk about tangent. Tangent of theta, let's do tangent of, let's do 40 pi over 4 again. Pi over 4 equals tangent of pi plus pi over 4. Let me switch to green. So here's tangent, here's pi over 4. It's the point square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. See, I said it'd be handy to have your unit circle around. In this case, tangent is 1. If I want the tangent of pi plus pi over 4, I go 180 degrees around my circle. Then pi over 4, what point is this? Well, this is the same point, but with negative coefficients. So that would give me a positive 1 tangent as well. So tangent and cotangent have periods of pi. And sine, cosine, secant, cosecant have periods of 2 pi. So let's go ahead and find the exact values of 17 pi, cosine of 5 pi, not degrees, pi, and tangent of 5 pi over 4. So sine of 17 pi, that's the same thing as sine of... 16 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, right? And this equals 4 pi, so we're going around the circle 1, 2 times, and now I'm left with pi over 4. Here's pi over 4. This is when I've got x is the square root of 2 over 2, y is the square root of 2 over 2. So the sine of 17 pi over 4, which is our y value, would be square root of 2 over 2. Let's change colors for clarity. If I have cosine of 5 pi, that's the same as cosine of 4 pi plus pi, right? Because it's periodic every 2 pi. So we're going to go around 5 pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That puts me right here. Cosine is x. Sorry about that. Cosine is x, so that gives me a value of negative 1. Next, I'm looking at tangent of 5 pi over 4, which I think was the example I just did. Here's where 5 pi over 4 is, and it's the point negative square root of 2, square root of 2, negative square root of 2. I'm not very creative, but we found on the previous slide that we got a tangent of negative 1.